<laughs> Given that 2011 is on the dry springs on record uh, and disease levels in crops were generally very low, uh, some of you might be forgiven for wondering what on earth I'm going to um, tell you about today in the next 40 minutes, but actually there's quite a lot of information out there. The fact that the main objective of the fungicide performance study is to test new actives so that once a product is registered, we can share that new information with you and give sound, independent information to growers and agronomists to guide your fungicide strategies. And it's that point that we're at now. Adexar was recently registered, and that is the one new addition to the fungicide portfolio since last season. Uh, Adexar contains 62.5 grams of both phylloxaperoxad, or zemium, uh, and the same quantity of epoxyconazole, such that in a two-litre full-label rate, you've got about a full dose of epoxyconazole and a 125 grams of phylloxaperoxad as well. And we've been testing this since 2009, which means we've now got three years of data on this product. So even if 2011 was a bit quiet, the last two se seasons have actually been, uh, sorry, the, the previous two seasons uh, add to the total data set that we can show. Phloxapyroxad, I should add, is one of a new generation of uh, SDHI fungicides. The other two out there that were registered last season, uh, Isoparazam and Bixofen, um, make up the, the set. And these are a new mode of action for foliar disease control. I should add a note of caution at this point. They are a single site mode of action, uh, like strobilurins. And for those of you that remember what happened with strobilurins, we fear the same could happen with SDHIs without careful management. And because SDHIs have actually um, are already not working in some horticultural crops where they're being used, uh, there are real fears that uh, this could happen, and FRAC have actually uh, considered this to be at high or moderate to high risk of resistance development. So the general advice is they should only be used in mixtures with act active partners such as triazoles. Well, that's probably just as well for the fact actually they're only available in mixtures with triazoles at the moment. Some of you may note these um, have actually got bits of boscolid in there as well. Uh, boscolid is actually... Um, and SDHI. We tend to separate that from the others, though, for the fact that it doesn't have the foliar activity that we see from the rest, but does have very good stem-based activity um, compared to the other SDHIs. And you can see there as well the product names associated with the isoparazam. I think you're probably fairly familiar with that. Uh, Bixofen, of course, has there are a range of X-Pro products, um, but Aviator is the lead one that we've been testing. I should just mention the sites uh, that we've been testing at in 2011. We've got four septoria sites in total, but actually these six trials. Um, two of the sites uh, in Andover and Fife have double trial designs, whereby we test rate responses at T1 and separately in a separate trial next door at T2. Um, at Rosemont, you'll see there's a five spray timings. That actually refers to a, a piece of work so we were testing a new design there. We have a full rate response, but we're also looking at spray timings around that. And that's something we probably won't share with you today, but uh, we're looking at um, ways to test flexibility of spray timings through that new design, and I'm hoping we can share that information with you another time. Courtesy of Chuggis in Ireland, we've also got a, a site over there just looking at a single rate response to Septoria. And at Terrington, Cambridge and Fife, we're looking at yellow rust, brown rust and mildew in single rate response trials. I should add, for those of you that aren't familiar with this data, this is a severe test of product efficacy. We're not testing products in the way that you would test them in the field or in other trials, perhaps. Um, we take high-risk sites, find the most susceptible varieties, uh, and then just apply fungicides once. Um, exactly what you shouldn't do, really. Uh, but that allows us to interrogate in some detail just how products may differ and active substances may differ in their efficacy. And we test those at quarter, right up to a double rate. Clearly, you can't apply double rates in the field yourselves, but that allows us to fit the curves around the full rate with a little bit more accuracy. Once the trials have been sprayed and, and the leaves assessed, we then categorise each leaf as either a radicant or protectant relative to, based on a leaf emergence um, relative to spray timing. So eradicant leaves will have been out for some time before the application is applied, 
uh, and therefore uh, will have been infected prior to uh, those leaves being sprayed. Protectant data is generally from the leaf that's just emerged at the time of spraying. That said, I should add a note of caution when we look at the eradicant data in a moment. I didn't actually press that, but uh, anyhow. Um, I should add an element of caution when looking at the eradicant data for the fact that in the last couple of years, uh, we've actually had to look quite deep in the canopy or quite deep in the crop to find leaves where we're seeing eradicant activity. Now, that means we're looking at leaves sometimes that have been out for some time and will have had infection events that are beyond control. And so sometimes we, some, in years like this last year, we see eradicant data can, be, um, can vary from one season to the next and actually can look poorer than we might normally expect, primarily for the fact nothing is working uh, when we're looking qu quite deep in the canopy like that. When we look at actually what data we have from 2000, we've actually got a reasonable set, um, eradicant and protectant, um, and most sites on the Septoria have provided a decent amount of information. We've got some yellow rust information from Terrington. Unfortunately, both uh, the mildew in Fife and the uh, brown rust in Cambridge seem to have, uh, well, we didn't get disease at either of those sites. So coming on to look at the curves, the first thing I should say about these uh, is that the curves on the left and right are the same data sets. Uh, and this goes for throughout the presentation. Uh, you can look at the, the two. And we've separated the graphs, the lines, really just to allow comparison so you can actually see more clearly what each products are doing. And there is, on each of these graphs, a read across uh, in Opus. So I don't seem to have a pointer here. Is there a pointer to hand? I could not to worry. Um, you can see quite clearly the, op the Opus dotted black line there representing um, Opus on both those two graphs to allow a bit of cross comparison. Clearly, if you look at the left-hand graph there, Opus and Proline and Ignite, I should say, should I would say we do actually fit the points to these curves as well. And that's really just to allow you to gauge in your own mind how much confidence we should have in the, in the curve fit. And where the line and the curve and, and the points uh, are very closely aligned, we can have more confidence in that data. Where there's a bit of scatter around them, we might have a little less confidence. And I think it's fair to say in eradicant activity in 2011, when you look at the left-hand graph, the azoles there, there's quite a bit of scatter around there. Uh, you probably would find it quite difficult to separate some of those. Perhaps Brutus looks slightly stronger at the higher rates. Brutus being a double-strength triazole, that's perhaps not surprising. Look at the right-hand side, and uh, clearly we've got the SDHIs in there, uh, Seguris and IZM. We have been testing straight IZM within these trials and showing the information because that's a useful guide as to whether or not SDHIs are still working, and we hope to include that as we go forward. Clearly, IZM alone is doing a reasonable job on Septoria and curative situations, quite similar to that of Opus. What's perhaps surprising is Segurus isn't looking like it's um, much better than that. Uh, we would have thought that with Opus and IZM in there, that it would look stronger than it does. But clearly, the two other SDHIs are doing very well. We have Aviator there uh, and a Dexar. I think, although the separation is small, you would say those curves look slightly different and that the Dexar looks slightly stronger in 2011. That is, albeit about a 2% difference, not even that, perhaps. So small differences, but some difference, perhaps, there between those. When we look at protectant data, actually, the fits tend to be a little bit better. And you can see on the left-hand side, the straight solo uh, azoles, Proline, Opus, and, and Ignite, following a very similar path. We struggle to separate Opus and Proline. We see them very much as twins, if you like. They're performing very similarly in, on, in activity on Septoria. Brutus, clearly a little stronger, being the double strength triazole that it is. Look to the right, though. Clearly, the SDHIs are adding significantly to the control that we're seeing in protectant situations. And actually, all the SDHIs are a lot closer when we look at protectant data. Aviator and, uh, and Seguris in there both doing a good job. IZM alone actually looking pretty strong. Um, and ADEXAR again, perhaps separating itself at the lower rates especially. I think nearer the full rate, things are a little bit closer and tighter between Aviator and, uh, and ADEXAR. But at the half doses, um, yeah, ADEXAR looking very strong there. So that's 2011. We've actually got the, the cross-season analysis now, which adds the 2011 to the previous two years and perhaps is the most robust data set that we can show. <coughs> and this is the eradicant data for the three seasons. 
total of 13 trials this is taken from. Uh, clearly Opus and Proline, as we would expect, following a very similar path on the left-hand side there, uh, but Brut is stronger, given the, uh, the loading of triazole in there, that's hardly surprising. Again, IZM following a similar path to Opus, showing some eradicant activity on its own. And Seguris, a little bit better than that, but again, we perhaps would be expect to see that a little bit better still, given what it's got in it. Um, Aviator and, uh, and Adexa, though, pulling apart there from the others, uh, and she's clearly showing very good eradicant activity. And again, I think you'd probably say of the two, Adexa looking slightly stronger than Aviator at lower rates. <coughs> looking at protectant data across seasons, uh, again, a very similar pattern to what we saw in 2011. Um, Proline and Opus, again, following a similar path. Brutus a little stronger. And on the right-hand side, again, the SDHI is looking very strong. Much less difference when we look at protectant information. And generally, we tend to be applying products in more protectant situations. So I think perhaps out in the field in programmes, the differences will be less than we perhaps see here. Uh, but sometimes we do need that eradicant information and, and activity. When we look at this, though, yeah, clearly we're still seeing some separation between um, the SDHIs, albeit at, at very low levels of disease. Uh, IZM and Segura is doing a, a decent job. Aviator looking slightly stronger uh, and ADEXAR slightly stronger again. I think it's that activity at the lower rates that really perhaps separates ADEXAR and this. When you get up to the full rates, the differences are less. When we look at yield over trials, these are just the Septoria trials, I should add, um, in 2011. This is an atypical way of looking at yield. We wouldn't normally um, <coughs> consider um, yield. I mean, when, we, when you look at fungicides and the effect on fungicides on crops, yields uh, are due to a sequence and a mixture throughout the year. This is just due to a single application. But it does give some guide as to what uh, we, we, we might expect when we use these products in a mixture. Clearly Opus and Proline, as we would expect, Brutus looking slightly stronger, exactly the mirror image of the disease profile we saw earlier. When we look at the STHIs, they do seem to be adding something over straight Opus. Certainly Segurus is looking quite good there compared to uh, the disease control we saw perhaps from it. Uh, but clearly the two new, new STHIs, are Dexar uh, and Aviator, looking quite similar, especially around the full dose. Perhaps at the lower rates, I think you'd have to say Dexar has the edge there. And if we look over the three seasons that yield, that's the three season analysis, and it pretty much follows the same pattern as we've just talked you through. Again, a little bit of separation between the SDHIs, not much in it, but um, yeah, at full rates, you'd probably say they were the same. At the half rate, uh, Adexar looks a little stronger. Okay, one other thing that we do within these trials, to perhaps as a bit of a reality check, we look at both T1 plus T2 applications at a half rate. It's a small add-on trial that sits beside the, the other trials. And this is just the results from, on yield from those. Uh, and you can see quite clearly on the left-hand side, you've got Bravo in there. Um, actually, last year was a good year for Bravo. It performed quite well uh, within trials. Good protectant season, so it's perhaps not surprising it, did, it had a good year. Uh, it, it in itself, a litre and a half of, a litre of Bravo twice, uh, adding a tonne and a half to yield over the untreated. Opus, Ignite and Proline, following a, um, giving a similar sort of yield to, to Bravo, in fact. Uh, but actually, when you look at the left-hand side, Segurus, Aviator, and Adexar, that's where the real lift is. And actually, I did do a, a brief uh, average of the yields there. Uh, if you compare the average of Opus, Ignite, and Proline with that of Segurus, Aviator, and Adexar, it's actually about a 0.7 of a tonne yield lift. Um, so quite a significant yield lift there, although when you look at it and look at the error bars in there, it's probably quite difficult to separate them. What's interesting is we did really see the difference between the SDHIs and the straight azoles in the field. Um, on the left here, you've got, sorry, from my angle, that looks very dark, but um, I'm hoping you can see this. On the left is the untreated at Rosemond um, in early July uh, last year. And actually, this is consort. Uh, this is seven weeks after the sprays were applied. The level of disease was very high, and the untreated is dead. Uh, Ignite. Was still holding on a little bit, had a certain amount of green leaf area still there, but it was heavily diseased. And there was a noticeable difference when you look between Ignite 
and a Dexar at full rate. This is just the single application at growth stage 39. <coughs> when we looked across the SDHIs, though, actually what was noticeable really was that the SDHIs were all standing out and were all considerably greener than any azole treatment alone, uh, clearly showing that we've got a level of persistence and activity there from these products. Um, perhaps you might have said Segurus wasn't quite as strong, but actually the IZM molecule is persistent and, and it did hold on, although it was perhaps had a, a, a level of disease slightly above the others, it was holding on to its green leaf area very, very well towards the end of the season. An aviator and a Dexel were very difficult to separate, visually anyway. Okay, looking at yellow rust, uh, as Simon's already alluded to, actually, I mean, yellow rust, a major problem, but actually last season, very, very cold winter, did check the disease. Um, despite that, we saw, still saw yellow rust in crops and had a significant epidemic in some parts. Um, and the optimal conditions for yellow rust are around 16 degrees. Um, it can, though, be very active around 10. Uh, and it's perhaps not surprising that we're already seeing yellow rust, given the very mild conditions we've had this autumn. We're already seeing foci in, in crops uh, at the moment. Uh, and there's a whole range of varieties that are very susceptible out there. We, two years ago, um, yellow rust Armageddon was predicted on the basis of the fact that um, everybody was switching to Oakley and Oakley had broken. Um, but actually, the cold winters in the last couple of seasons really have check, checked it back. If we have a mild winter, I do believe this could be a major issue. Looking at activity, this is activity uh, three weeks after application. Uh, and actually, we've got a decent amount of disease at Terrington this year. Um, and generally, actually, three weeks after application, everything was, was working pretty well. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got Ignite, Proline. Perhaps surprising to see Proline looking quite as good as Ignite there. Generally, you would have said it was slightly weaker. Um, but three weeks after, that was looking good. And actually, on the right, you can compare the SDHIs and um, Aviator in there looking fine. Uh, others, including Ignite, Segurus, and Adex, are also looking strong. You might try and separate things at the quarter dose there, but at the, anything over a half dose was doing a decent job three weeks on. However, later in the season, we did see differences. And these weren't recorded in terms of disease, but we did see differences in the persistence of products, and that did come through to yield. And you can see that quite clearly in yield um, graphs here. On the right-hand side, uh, Adexar and Segurus really did hold on very well towards the end of the season, and Aviator wasn't quite so strong um, as those two treatments. And it was pretty much purely yellow rust at this site. It wasn't really that there was any... There was a very small amount of brown rust came in late season, but other than that, it was almost a pure yellow rust site. And again, a little bit of separation between the azoles, as we might expect. Proline perhaps not quite as strong as, as Opus, uh, or Ignite, rather, in terms of its persistence. And we saw this also in the T1 plus T2 trial. Uh, the yields don't show much in here, other than the fact that we were seeing about a two or even three tonne yield lift over the untreated, untreated yielding about six, and the treatments all yielding about nine or ten. Uh, the only perhaps pull, thing you can pull out from the yields, the red dots here, is that Proline wasn't perhaps quite as strong as the others, as we might expect, uh, when applied alone on yellow rust. Aviator, better than Proline, but still not quite as strong as the other SDHIs, Segurus and Dexar in the middle there. Perhaps not surprising, given that Dexar and Segurus have both got epoxyconazole in their, in their formulations. When we look at brown rust, yeah, I equally uh, I share Simon's concerns about brown rust this season. Uh, I think there's a, a real chance. I mean, the last major outbreak we had was in 2007, 2008, and that was primarily put down to a very dry, sorry, very dry, a very mild winter and spring. And if you looked at temperatures in that season, they were generally about two degrees above average throughout the whole of the winter. And October and November the 2011 have started in just that same way. I know we had a cold morning this morning, but if December is also two degrees above average and we go into the spring in the same way, uh, then the brown rust that's already out there will start to become a problem, and uh, there's a lot of very susceptible varieties out there. In terms of efficacy, we actually have to go back to 2009 to show you data on brown rust. So much of this, um, much of this data, actually, you probably will have seen before, other than the fact um, we, we now have Adexa on the right-hand side. But, yeah, clearly, Proline, not quite as effective as Opus on brown rust. But 
put a strobilurin in there uh, in Firefly, which is protheoconazole plus floxostrobin. Um, clearly, the light blue line there showing, no, sorry, not the light blue, the dark blue line showing good activity there. Comet still very active on brown rust, and Brutus, double strength triazole, also looking good. On the right hand side, though, you've got the STHIs, and actually, all the STHIs are pretty active on uh, brown rust. We haven't actually got Segurus on there, but we have got IZM, and given that that's the same concentration of IZM in that formulation as we have in Segurus, you'd expect Segurus to be very, very good on brown rust too. A little bit of information on mildew as well. Um, when you look at mildew, um, we've got um, the untreated was around 7%. Proline itself is pretty active on mildew, um, but clearly the straight mildew aside on the right-hand side, Talius, Syphilimid, completely taking it out. Some evidence that Aviator as well has some activity on mildew. I'm not even sure Bayer would say that it it, it, Bixofen itself has intrinsic activity, but I think they think the formulation is actually improving uh, the level of mildew control. But IZM clearly in there as a solo, uh, also having some activity on mildew. So they may add to powdery mildew control. I'm not sure that'd be what you'd use uh, specifically for it though. Coming on to talk about field performance of azoles. And many of you may have seen scatter plots like this in the past. And I think I should perhaps start by saying what's different about this one. Um, we've actually, four years ago, we developed a set of rules uh, for the inclusion of data within the fungicide performance trials because we realised that actually when you went back over the 15 or so years that the trials have been running, the data in each season has been looked at in a slightly different way and it was necessary to clean up the data set. So we've actually gone back through every season and applied the same rules that we currently apply over the previous data so we can look at it on a level playing field. And that's the place we're at now and these points show the efficacy of Opus and Proline we're plotting them on the same axis and drawing one line through them because you can't separate them in terms of their efficacy. Statistically, they are following the same pattern. And we are generally seeing a decline. If you look at around 2001, the efficacy that we would have expected from uh, a quarter dose of epoxyconazole or protheoconazole, um, we'd have been getting about 60% control. And now we would expect that to be near a 45%. So. Clearly things have slipped a little bit, but they're still working to some extent as well, we should add. That's the quarter rate response. If we look at half doses, we're seeing a very similar pattern here. Uh, the starting point's a little bit higher and the graph isn't quite as steep, but um, where we might have expected 75% control uh, back in 2001, uh, we're probably looking at nearer 60% control now from a half dose of a triazole. So, still working, but not quite as active as they were. Reassuringly, though, when you look at full label rates, it's not quite a significant response there. Quite close, but not quite there. Um, and so, generally, we could say that actually the full rate of, the pro of the, both of those two azoles is holding up reasonably well. So, to conclude on wheat, We've got some good data from this season and some yellow rust information as well. Uh, all the SDHIs uh, look good on septoria protectant activity um, compared to their azor partners applied alone. And it's fair to say a Dexar and an Aviator showed excellent curative activity. I should add on rusts, I should have added a bullet point on rusts. On yellow rust, clearly um, the SDHIs are very active and um, probably Segurus and a Dexar stand out in extreme situations. Uh, on brown rust, though, they're all, all the SDHI azole combinations are, are active and are adding to disease control. And since 1995, I mean, the, the field performance of azoles has gradually slipped. Uh, level of control achieved by a 0.5 dose in, in 2001 would require about a litre dose now. That's one way of looking at it. So moving on to consider barley. Well, um, what have we got on barley from 2011? The um, first thing to say is it's perhaps not surprising given the dry conditions that some sites did struggle last year to get any barley data. Uh, thankfully on Rinco, we've got some good data from both Scotland, Wales and Ireland, courtesy of uh, Chuggis. On Netblotch, uh, yeah, sites in Yorkshire and, and Norfolk 
didn't get any net blotch information, but we did get a little bit from Scotland that's contributing to the data sets. Nothing on brown rust, but mildew data from Scotland again, and ramularia as well. We do have a little bit on that. What products have we been testing? Well, there's several core treatments within this. The first three really representing the, the, the main cores, Proline, uh, Comet and, and Ignite, the standards. Um, new STHIs, Bontima, Siltra and Adexa in there as well. At the bottom there, you can see the new mildewicides, the, the, the straight mildewicides, I should say, uh, and they've mainly just been kept for testing within the mildew trial uh, itself. So looking at the eradicant activity, I should add the eradicant Rinko data from 2010 is a bit noisy, and you can see by the scatter around um, the points around these curves, the curves aren't a perfect fit. So I think we need to be a little cautious interpreting too much from the left-hand side of this chart. Uh, but clearly... Proline still the standard, doing a, a decent job on, on eradicant activity on Rinko. Comet's looking surprisingly good there, but it ignites perhaps where we would expect it to be. On the right-hand side, actually, though, where we're looking at these SDHI azole mixtures, we've actually got some pretty useful activity there. Um, and clearly, we would say from that, Adexar and uh, Aviator, or Siltra rather, I say, the blue, green line is now Siltra, similar sort of a product, um, still a Bixofen, uh, proteoconazole mix. Uh, but yes, yeah, Siltra looking perhaps slightly stronger than a DEXA. Bontema though, considering Bontema is just IZM and Ciprodonil and there's no azole in there, that's actually looking pretty good compared to Proline. So it's actually got a decent level of activity in there. On that data, you might have separated a DEXA and Siltra with Siltra looking slightly stronger. I think you might struggle to when you look at protectant data here. Um, clearly, actually the protectant data from 2011 is perhaps more robust and you can see the right-hand side, sorry, the left-hand side graph showing pretty much what we would expect, Ignite, uh, not quite as strong as Proline. Uh, then Epoxiconazole hasn't been working as well for, for several years now on Rincosporium, but Proline doing a decent job. And Comet actually looking, again, surprisingly good in there. On the right-hand side, Bontima following a very similar pattern to Proline, which actually suggests IZM has got some good activity on Rincosporium in itself. Uh, but the two other... SDHI azole mixes, uh, Adexar and Siltra, both doing a very good job in protecting the crops against Rinksporium. That's the 2011 data. We've also got the cross season analysis now. Uh, and clearly, when you start looking across years, the, the fits tend to get better and the curves tend to follow the points a little bit more. Uh, and actually, on the right hand side, it's a little bit closer to what we might expect. You'll, you'll notice actually the inclusion of Fandango on the left there. Um, we can do that. So a trick of mathematics, we've got two seasons data on it, so we've been able to include it in the cross-season analysis uh, by using a statistical analysis, a package that, uh, that can uh, essentially uh, fill the gaps. But Ignite, um, not quite as good as Proline as we would expect. Looking on the right, though, very difficult to separate Adexar and Siltra, both looking very similar over the three-year period. Uh, Proline's still doing a decent job, though, and Bontima not far behind. On protectant data, a very similar picture here. Um, again, Ignite, quite as strong as Protheoconazole. Um, Fandango and Proline doing a, still doing a decent job in protecting situations on Rinko. But the STHIs do look a, a little bit stronger, especially the two new uh, Azole STHI mixtures, uh, Siltra and Adexar. But again, Bontima still doing a pretty decent job in a protecting situation given that there's no Azole in that. And you'd probably say Siltra is slightly stronger than the Dexar there, given on, based on that data. Looking at net blotch, actually most um, products work very well within our trials on net blotch. I'm not sure you could always say that in the field. Um, but um, yeah, clearly a half dose of almost anything was doing a decent job on net blotch in 2000, uh, across, the, across the three years. Um, Comet, perhaps the exception with the F129L mutation some time ago, uh, Clearly, that's not quite as active as it might have been previously. A little bit of data on mildew. On the left-hand side, you've got some straight mildewicides uh, in protectant situation uh, in 2011. Clearly, um, Cyflamid, Torch, Talius, all doing a decent job in protecting against barley mildew. And actually, Proline itself is still pretty active on barley mildew. Uh, on the right-hand side, the SDHIs. And Bontima, perhaps not quite as strong as the others here. But Adexar and Siltra 
both doing a decent job and perhaps still to a, I think on, on that data you'd struggle to separate them. There's a bit of noise around those lines, uh, as you can see by the, the points versus the curves. Looking at eradicant activity, again, actually, Bontima not quite as strong as the rest. Proline doing a decent job, actually, one of the best eradicants on mildew on this. We haven't got the straight mildew aside in here uh, due to the fact that um, this mildew data is actually from a trial that wasn't specifically looking at mildew. Um, the other data was. Um, but yes, uh, Dexar and Siltra are both having decent activity on mildew, and Siltra is certainly looking a little bit stronger there. Probably primarily for the fact it's got epoxiconazole in there. Sorry, protheoconazole in there. On Ramularia, I think the point's the same in Proline is the standard. It's still doing a decent job on Ramularia. But clearly the SDHIs are also active. Uh, Tracker in there uh, doing a decent job. But, and actually chlorothanol is, is still useful on, on Ramularia. Uh, you can see Bravo in there, the black line through the middle. Bontima, also good on Ramularia. But the best clearly by this would be uh, Adexar and Siltra, both looking very strong and very similar in terms of their ram ramularia activity. So just to round up on, on barley, um, the SDHIs had useful efficacy on barley diseases. I think it's fair to say Siltra and Adexar are pretty closely matched all rounders uh, and both clearly more effective than their azole components alone. Uh, Bontima, also very active on net blotch and ramularia and brown rust has decent activity on rhynchosporium given that it doesn't actually have uh, an azole with it. And the strobilurins, we shouldn't forget the strobilurins in barley, uh, still very active on net blotch, rhynco and rusts. And that was all we had to say. Thank you.